Portable power stations are a great way to keep your life energized, whether it's for just a weekend camping trip or maybe a whole home backup power solution, there's something out there that's gonna work for you. And in this video, I'm gonna give you the information and tools along with some examples that you'll need to make an educated choice and maybe even find some uses for a PPS you'd never imagined. The first place to start when selecting a PPS is the size of the unit itself, and there's a lot of variation there. If you're looking for something that's very portable, I recommend something like the C1000. Its greatest asset, aside from its impressive output, is its portability. It's easy to take with you wherever you need the power, and you'll find yourself using this in situations you maybe never imagined. If you're looking for something with a little more battery capacity and output power, and you can have the additional weight and size to spare, the F2000 is a great choice. Now, when it comes to a whole home backup or something that's gonna power an entire off-grid rig, well, then that's when the extra size and weight of the F3800 is a great trade-off to make. Not only does it have a big battery bank and the ability to have 6,000 watts of output, its relatively compact form factor means that you can put it in a lot of places you might not expect, and despite its large weight, it's probably gonna be just fine remaining where it is, powering your life and your loads every day. Let's move on and talk about the power output capabilities of these units here so you can choose which will work best for you. All of these units feature USB charging ports on the front. They have USB-A and USB-C type ports that enable you to charge devices like cell phones very rapidly using their intelligent charging technology. While that's really important for a smaller device like the C1000, it may be of less importance if you're looking for a whole home backup solution that you would have in the F3800. The next thing to talk about are the car ports. Each one has a 10 amp, 12 volt style automotive type port that you can plug in those accessories that normally you would plug into the cigarette lighter on your vehicle. The last and most important thing to talk about are the AC output capabilities of these units. The AC outputs are the receptacles in the front that look like the ones you would have in a standard household. The C1000 is capable of 1800 watts of output and that's the same as you would find on a typical 15 amp circuit in your home. The F2000 steps that up a notch to 2400 watts of continuous output, and that's the same as a 20 amp outlet that you would find in your house. That's also the limit for this style of receptacle. So anything that you could plug into a normal outlet, you know that you can run off of the F2000. The F3800, however, has 6000 watts of total output, and not only can you get that at 120 volts, but also at 240 volts. And that is essential if you're looking for something to be a whole home backup power solution, because oftentimes homes use 240 volt appliances, especially for their HVAC systems, water heaters, and clothes dryers. If you wanna be able to use those off grid or in a backup power situation, make sure the unit that you pick has that capability and the F3800 delivers that. An additional feature that really sets the F3800 apart is the ability to connect it to a second F3800 and double your output wattage on both ends, not only in the 120 volt, but also in the 240 volt sections. That ensures you have the capability to power even a large home backup in the event that your power goes down. While it's small, the C1000's AC output section is capable of powering things like a hair dryer or a heat gun and small tools easily as long as they don't exceed that 1800 watt output rating. The F2000 on the other hand is capable of powering devices that use even the most of a 20 amp conventional wall outlet. That could be a 120 volt welder for example or maybe even a table saw or a chop saw or other tools that really want to see their own dedicated 120 volt outlet. While the power output capabilities of these devices is essential to choosing the right one, so is making sure you have the right size battery capacity. All of the Anchor Solix lines use a lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, which is proven safe, reliable, and good for thousands of charge cycles so you can get years of dependable service. Where they differ is in the capacity of those battery banks. The C1000 has a built-in battery that is capable of 1,000 watt hours of energy storage. The F2000 has a roughly 2,000 watt hour energy storage battery bank, while the Solix F3800 steps that up to 3,800 watt hours of energy storage, or 3.8 kilowatt hours. A watt hour is a useful way of measuring the battery capacity of any type of battery, and it equates roughly to the amount of watts used times the number of hours it's used for. For example, a 100 watt light bulb operating for five hours will be 500 watt hours of energy. That means if we have a 1000 watt load, we can run it for about an hour on the C1000, two hours on the F2000, and 3.8 hours on the F3800. A great feature of the Anchor Solix line is the ability to add expansion batteries to extend your runtime without the need of buying a whole nother unit. 
The Solix C1000 and F2000 both have the ability to double their battery capacity through the addition of expansion battery packs. The F3800 has the ability to more than double its battery capacity through the addition of multiple battery expansion packs. It's important to note that when you're deciding which system is going to work best for you, you want to add up the amount of watt hours or the amount of times you'll be running your high load and even small load devices so that you can make sure you have the runtime you need. And if you don't, select a unit that offers the ability to add expansion batteries sufficient enough to meet your needs. Now, all that battery capacity is great, but we need to have a way to quickly recharge it. Luckily, the Anchor Solix line has you covered with the ability to not only recharge from the sun using solar panels, but also by plugging into a wall outlet. When charging from the sun, the C1000 can take up to 600 watts and that allows it to recharge in under two hours. The same is true for the F2000. It can receive up to 1000 watts of solar input, meaning it can also recharge in right around two hours. If you max out the solar input on the F3800, which is 2400 watts, you can recharge this device in under two hours as well. When we're charging from a wall outlet, this will charge in under one hour, which is really impressive. The F2000 takes about an hour and a half, while the F3800 takes around three and a half hours to recharge. In addition to that, all of these devices feature AC pass-through charging. That means when it's connected to a power source, like a wall outlet, it will pass that power through the device, charge the battery, and also continue to power the outlets that are plugged into the front, making sure that your loads are powered while you're charging your batteries as well. That's a feature that's super handy if you're using it in a type of backup power solution where you want to make sure that the output is continuous whether or not the power is flowing into the device. Well, now that you know the specs and features to look for when you're shopping for your PPS, let me combine that information with some solar panels and give you some real world examples of what I would select to meet different application needs. The first couple examples I wanna give use the C1000 as the core of the system. If we pair that with one of the 100 watt folding panels from Anchor, that becomes a great setup for car camping or even situations where you have to walk in a little bit because their small size and lightweight means they're ultra portable. I also like the 100 watt panel because it's got zippered pockets on the back that can store your cables when you're in motion. If we're moving up to something a little bigger, say taking on van life like this very small Delica behind me, I'm still gonna choose the C1000, but I'm gonna bump up to the larger 200 watt panel. Now, I would hate to mess up the roof of this van by mounting fixed solar panels on top, so I'm sticking with the folding panel, and if I need more power, I can add up to two more for a total of 600 watts of deployable solar power when I need it most. If I need some extra battery capacity to get me through the night, I can always add an expansion battery to the C1000 and double that capacity. And if things are ever coming up tight and I need to quickly recharge, I can always bop into a coffee shop and have the C1000 fully recharged from zero in under an hour. Those are great features and I love the C1000 for its portability and the ease of integration into small spaces, especially like camping or van life. And van life in particular, if you don't want to mess up the roof or tear your van apart by installing a more complicated or larger solar system. Now my next example is a bigger rig, so I sized up on the Solix to the F2000. I like the F2000 for this category of medium sized rig or van or bus conversion because it has 2400 watts of AC output, which is enough to run a small rooftop air conditioner or a mini split and still have some left over for other devices, but also because it has the ability to receive 1000 watts of solar input. In our case, we could have roof mounted solar panels like the ones behind me, or you could bump up to the larger 400 watt anchor folding flexible panel system. And with just a couple of these quickly get to that 1000 watt limit so that you can recharge this battery bank quickly to meet those high power loads that this excels at running. Now it's a little bigger and a little heavier, but they make up for it with this easy tow handle on the side and wheels to keep it portable. If you need extra battery capacity too, you can double the battery capacity with the expansion pack. And that's a great setup for those of you looking for a simple way to get power into a medium sized rig, run those larger loads and still maintain a quick recharge time when the sun is out. My next example is using the F3800 as a whole home backup power solution. It's a great pick for that because the 6,000 watts of AC output is large and it's delivered to you at not only 120 volts, but 240 volts AC. That means right out of the box, it can power large electronic appliances like clothes dryers and air conditioners without worry. Simply connect it to your home's main breaker panel using a generator interlock kit as we've done here or a generator transfer switch and you're up and running off the grid. If you need additional power, you can double your output by connecting a second Solix F3800 
And of course, you can extend the runtime to beat even the longest blackouts by adding expansion batteries. Pairing with the F3800 for whole home or shop backup, the 400 watt panel is a no brainer as the obvious pick. Six of these will max out the solar input on your F3800, which means you can recharge from zero to full in under two hours. This is a great bet for those of you who want the off-grid reliability without having to install a permanent system. You can deploy these panels quickly, pack them up just as fast, and get the reliability you need without the upfront expense of a solar install that you might be dreading. The last portable power station and solar panel combo I wanna talk about is this, the F3800 and Anker's 400 watt folding flexible panels. The F3800 is capable of 6,000 watts of AC output, which is enough to power even the largest rigs like the one behind me. And because it can accept up to 2,400 watts of solar input, you could use up to six of these 400 watt panels to replenish your battery pack. Speaking of battery packs, because it is compatible with expansion batteries, you can add as many as you need to make sure you get the runtime your lifestyle demands when you're living off grid. When you're selecting a portable power station for a larger application like the rig behind me, there's a couple of easy rules of thumb you can follow to help you make the right choice. The first is to take a look at the shore power connection that your RV or motorhome uses. And in our case, we have a 50 amp plug. 50 amps is a lot of power, and that's why I've selected the F3800 to be the appropriate source of energy for this coach. We're also in luck because on its side, it features a 50 amp receptacle that we can plug right into. Another useful rule of thumb is to take a look at the roof. In our case, we have two rooftop air conditioners. Those are notorious power hogs, and the only way we're gonna be able to run both of those is to select a unit with as high output power as our F3800 does here. While this is a great core section to create power for the rig, we need more expansion batteries to store that energy if we plan on being off-grid for long periods of time, so I recommend buying one or more to meet your needs. It's also worth noting that when we're using all this power, we'll need a way to put it back in. I recommend going with the large 400 watt modules from Anchor so you can maximize your solar regeneration capability. I know that selecting the right PPS can be daunting, but hopefully this video gave you the information and examples you needed to feel good about making your choice so that you can keep living in power.